Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, and welcome to another edition of Stamp School. Today we're going to make a tri-fold card, and it's really fun because inside the card, there's actually that panel there that can be taken off and used as a bookmark. I am using stamps from our sponsor, Artneco.com. There are some gorgeous stamps there, and I'm, get, I'm using two of my favorites today. I'm using the Bookmark and Sentiment set, which is where the bookmark comes from, and you can get that stamp individually if you don't want to buy the whole set. And also, one of the, uh, the Poppy stamp from the set of nine flowered trading cards which again is a really versatile set to have so you can save a little money if you want to buy the whole set brings a per stamp price down or you can get them individually if that's the only one you like and i do have a 10 percent off coupon code for you if you order from artneco.com and mention the frugal crafter they will refund you 10 percent or give you free shipping on your order over 50 whichever is greater now let's get to making that card to begin, stamp your images on white watercolor paper. I'm using hot pressed watercolor paper because it's smoother and easier to stamp on. I'll be coloring with Zig Kiritaki Real Brush markers, and these are great for getting in those tiny little details on these stamps. You could use your Spectrum Noir markers, but they do have a thicker tip, so you might just have to use extra care to make sure that you don't um, go outside of the lines. I also recommend kind of practicing with your colors, blending them together. Um, I put my dark color down first and then blend in my letter color and see the gradient that I can get before I do it on my image. That's why I often leave a little extra paper around my stamped image so I have that room to work. Now to do my background here on this card, what I'm doing is adding some of the dark purple, and I will warn you, purple is the hardest color to blend, so that's why I'm starting off with it because everything's gonna seem like a piece of cake after this. And then I'm adding some purple um, along the edge. I'm going about a quarter of the background. I don't wanna do it all at once with purple because I know that my dark purple will be completely dry and immovable if I go and outline the entire thing before trying to blend. So after I've gotten about a quarter of that outline done, I'm going in with my lighter purple, which is kind of like a lilac color, and I am going over that um, purple ink to keep it wet and help it blend out into the middle. So you want to keep doing that until you have your whole background completely done. If you have any hard lines or areas that didn't blend very well, which is quite possible when you're working with purples or reds, go ahead with a wet watercolor brush and just go over your background ink and let it blend a little bit better. Since we're working on watercolor paper, this is absolutely fine. If you're trying this on cardstock, it might pill the paper. So please give watercolor paper a try for this project. You don't have to spend a lot of money. I know the Canson XL uh, cold press pad is actually pretty smooth and very inexpensive. And so is the Fabriano hot press pad. Pads. Um, they're both very easy to find at your any arts and crafts supplier online. I set that first image aside to dry and decided to go ahead and work on the flowers on the bookmark. So what I'm doing is using an orange marker to add the shadows on one of the poppies. Then I'm going in with a lighter orange marker. I'm going over that darker ink and pulling it out a little bit. And then I'm going in with yellow and pulling out that orange ink a little bit so I get a beautiful gradient blend. Now I want a couple different colors of these poppies so I'm going to kind of skip around. I'm going to do a few in those shades of orange and then I'll uh, put some other colors in there as well. The nice thing about watercolor markers is that you don't need as many markers to blend. So on this red poppy here, I'm just going in with my red and then I'm taking pink and I am blending it out. I could even use a damp brush and blend it out with water. Since I'm working on watercolor paper, which is a key here, folks, things blend very easily. Now, it just occurred to me, you might wonder what is the difference between hot press and cold press paper? Why do you use those terms? I get asked that question a lot. So I thought I'd go in for a second and just um, explain that while you watch me color here. Um, hot press paper means smooth. So if you think of like ironing your clothes, if you iron your clothes with a hot iron, it gets them really smooth, right? If you tried to iron your clothes with a cold iron, it might smooth the wrinkles out a little bit, but they'd still be texture there, right? Think of that the same way when you're buying watercolor paper. Hot press equals smooth. And then there's rough watercolor paper, which you probably don't want for stamping just because if you think of all those um, dips and rises in the surface of watercolor paper, when you press that rubber stamp down to it, it's only only going to hit the top the top parts of the paper. So you want that smooth paper so that it can um, the the ink can make contact with the paper. Now some brands of watercolor paper are smoother than others, even if they're considered cold press, like the Canson XL, which is very affordable. That's a fairly smooth paper. So is the Canson Montville, also fairly smooth and suitable for stamping. So you know just feel a piece of paper, look at it, see how smooth it looks. If it looks smooth, it's probably going to work just fine for you. I really like that purple I used on the uh, background of the other card there, the other focal image. 
So I decided that I would add a couple purple poppies in here so my bookmark matches my um, front of my card exactly. So again, I'm just going in with those darker purples and even though it's such a small area so I could do all the darks and then go in and blend it, it worked just fine. And then I'm just blending it out with a lighter one. By starting with a big background and getting that big scary marker work out of the way, you'll notice that it is a breeze to color the rest of it. And any water-based markers are gonna work for this. If you have Tombows, if you have Le plumes. Mementos don't blend quite as well as some of the other ones, but they'll still, you can still work with them. Um, Crayolas, I'm telling you, whatever you have, just try to get a marker that's skinny enough to get into some of those details. Now, another technique I want to share is uh, with these markers in particular, not with the felt tip ones, but if you have the Zig Kirataki Real Brush markers, you can actually dip the brush in water and um, kind of fade out your color. So you'll get water in the bristles, and as you color, your color will become darker as the water feeds out. So it's just another little thing you can do with these markers. They're kind of pricey. They might not be worth the investment if you already have markers, but it's something to think about if you've been curious about these markers. They're very nice. I mean, you don't really need them if you have other water-based markers, I think, but you know, thought I'd jump to you anyway. Now the background here is much easier to blend because of the colors we're using. I'm starting with this olive green color and it's the darkest green I'm going to use and I'm going in and adding shadows. Now some people ask, Lindsay, how do you know where to put your shadows? Well for these, I'm looking like on the edges because it looks really nice to have a, a framed image where you have some shadow along the edge kind of fading inwards. But also I'm thinking about those big leafy poppy petals and I am putting some dark around them so that it kind of makes them stand out from the background a little bit. So that's how I determined where my shadows would go on this piece. If I'm doing a painting, what I like to do is um, really look at the, you know, still life I'm painting from or really look at the landscape, look where the sun's coming from and let that determine where my shadows are. Uh, if I'm painting something from memory or coloring a stamped image from memory or just trying to come up with my colors, sometimes I'll actually um, like set an object on my table and put a light on it and then see where the shadows fall just to give me a little bit of um, kind of information as to where I should put the shadows. Now I'm going in with this medium green here and I'm going over the olive and pulling out the color a little bit more. This is really easy again on the watercolor paper because watercolor paper has a coating on it. It's called sizing and it kind of keeps everything on top of the paper and keeps it from drying, the ink from drying out while you're still working on it. Now I'm going in with my palest, palest green and I am coloring over the medium green and just kind of pulling that color out into the middle. I, you probably noticed me turning my work and there's a reason I do this because I find that if I have that tip of the marker pointing it towards the edge I'm trying to color, I can get a lot of control. See here, I'm kind of pointing the edge of the marker to the edge of the little uh, frame there. I want to make sure I have a clean frame because I want I'm gonna color on the outside and that's another little money saving tip, a faux layer kind of. So I'm trying to keep that edges nice. So I'll turn my work so that I can comfortably reach all the spots I'm trying to color. I find if I'm awkward and I'm forcing it, then that's when mistakes happen and I don't want that to happen. So I'm just gonna finish up blending this and then we'll go on to working on the other panel. You can add a full layer to a card with a marker. Since I kept my edges neat and clean, I can just simply use this light marker to draw a border around my framed image. Then when I trim it out, I can leave some of that blue showing and it'll look like I have an extra sheet of paper. That's gonna save on thickness and postage when you mail your cards, which is a great money-saving idea. Now the background is dry in our first panel and I'm going back in to color the poppies, which I did the same way as I did them on the bookmark. I started with red and then I'm moving in with some orange. And I'm basically just kind of looking at my markers and seeing what's a few steps lighter or darker. Now I'm going in with this lighter orange and just pulling the color around. You could use any shades of oranges and yellows for this to get the color that you're looking for. Go ahead and color the other poppies in the same fashion. Now let's put this card together. I tried to design this so we wouldn't waste much for supplies. I took an eight and a half inch by 11 inch cardstock and I trimmed it to six and a quarter inches high. And then I scored it at four inches and at eight inches. And that left us a little flap for the trifold, which our bookmark will be built on. On that trifold flap, I decided to use a border punch to give it a scalloped edge. I think it's a really pretty extra touch that doesn't cost you any more money because it's something you already have. It's something you bought and paid for, right? So use those tools that you've been collecting. This little border punch I've had for years, it's from Stampin' Up, but you probably have something in your stash that'll give you a similar result. If you don't have a punch, you can get out those decorative edge scallop scissors and then use a little hole punch to punch out the little scallop holes. It'll be just as cute and uh, you're using what you have, which is totally awesome. 
To finish up the bookmark portion of our card, I'm simply layering up some strips of glitter paper that I had in my stash. And then I put my bookmark right on top. And remember, we did the faux layering, so it looks like we have even an extra layer of uh, paper there, but we don't. It's just because we colored the background. And then I'm using some strong double-sided tape to attach that to our back panel in our trifold. So you want to make sure it's closed. So in, Well, you could have it on either side. I think it's kind of pretty if you do it when it's closed so they see that when they open up their card. Now for the interior panel, I wanted to have a lighter paper that was going to um, show off that punching on the side there. And you're probably thinking, Lindsay, how am I going to write on this? Well, I'm going to tell you a little secret. When I give a card, I take a post-it note, a pretty post-it note, and they have them everywhere, even the dollar store, and I write my message on it. And then I stick that on the inside of the card. And you're probably wondering, why do you do that, Lindsay, after you do all that work? It's because that way the card can be reused. So somebody can actually take out the post-it note and re-gift the card if they want to, even after they take off the bookmark if they want to. Now, I have another little scrap of that glitter paper, and I just punched that same um, border on the edge so that I could use that on the front as an accent because my leftover paper wasn't long enough to cover the whole front and I think this is actually a little bit cuter. So what I'm going to do here is piece those two scraps of paper together so they will cover my front perfectly and then I simply just need to trim off the leftover glitter paper on the edge so that it makes a nice neat border. You can also use your scissors to round off any little odd bits from the front and the end of your punching. Sometimes with border punches, you'll have a little awkward bit here and there. Now, do not stick the cover. Do not stick that front panel to your card yet like I am doing because it's so much easier to decorate that panel and then stick it down after you've got your ribbon or brads or whatever you want to use for decoration. Okay, so do as I say, not as I do. Now I'm matting that uh, poppy image for the front of the card onto some more glitter cardstock, and I just think that looks so pretty with that little yellow border that I put. That was my faux layer. Remember, if we keep our borders nice and neat, we can do that. And I'm just putting down some more adhesive to stick that to my panel. Now that's a black and white paper that I chose. If you wanted, you could actually use your markers to color some of those flowers in and uh, make it match. It's completely up to you, and um, your markers will work just fine for that. They're not going to blend as well as they would on watercolor paper, but but it's still a great option. Now I wanted to add some ribbon and some washi tape since I love to collect that stuff. And I found this really cool um, scallop pattern at the Dollar Tree. And you can see there, I'm pulling up my uh, my panel because I can't hide my ribbon ends anymore. <laughs> oh, it was so frustrating. But I'm gonna go ahead and get started on the layering up anyway. I'm using a couple strips of this really pretty narrow washi tape. It's a lovely purple design. And I'm telling you, I just kind of lucked out with the colors that I picked on these um, images because they went so well with items I already had. But generally, it's a good idea to pick your pattern paper and your accessories first and then color your images so you know it's going to match. But I just I just lucked out on this one. Um, and I'm layering on that printed grow grain ribbon right on top. And then you'll see me peel back the... Uh, paper again so I can tuck all those lovely little ending bits underneath so I'll have a nice and, and neat finished uh, card when I'm done. I thought this card needed one more touch just to make it um, a little special and I found these beautiful rhinestones at Martin's which is a discount store in Maine and it had they had an AB finish which means Aurora Borealis I believe it's kind of like a shimmery shiny iridescent finish and they're kind of purpley and so I'm putting gradiated sizes. I started with a big one in the middle and then I'm putting like the smaller next smaller one on either side just to give it um, a pretty little accent and this is going to be a very flat card it should mail with a regular postage stamp because there aren't any super duper thick layers and we did some faux layering there and I just think it makes such a lovely card if you like this video please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and tell your friends about it and please check out our sponsor artneco.com you can find all the stamps that I used here and probably a lot more that you will love thank you so much for watching until next time happy crafting